we're near guaranteed at this point to have effectively models that are capable of automating any white collar job um, by like 27, 28 and, or near guaranteed end of decade. So that's Sholto Douglas, an AI researcher at Anthropic working on scaling up reinforcement learning. And if that sounded wild, he's not the only one saying it. In just the past few days, multiple leading voices in the AI space have made the same prediction. White collar work as we know it is on track for a full collapse by the end of this decade, if not sooner. But here's the real problem. No one's ready for it. Not companies, not governments, and definitely not the average person. So in this video, we'll be hearing directly from the top AI insiders, what's coming, why it's happening, and what, if anything, we can do to prepare. Let's get into it. All right, so starting off with the first clip, AI researcher Sholto Douglas was asked what kind of impact these models might have on global GDP in the next few years. Here was his rather concerning response. I think probably the, the initial impact looks something like China as an emergence, yeah, because there's, there's going to be like... What is the thing that has probably most impacted world GDP is, in the last right. 100 years? Um, <laughs> like, you know, and you look at like Shanghai over like the course of 20 years and like dramatically transforms like, you know, um, but and I, this will be like dramatically faster than that, but you'll see that. But there's important distinctions to be made here. One is that I think we're near guaranteed at this point to have effectively models that are capable of automating any white collar job um, by like 27, 28 and, or near guaranteed end of decade. That being said, that's because we have, uh, like those are those tasks are quite susceptible to our current, current suite of algorithms. Like, you know, you can try things on computers many times. You can, uh, there's like a you know, wealth of data available for this. Um, they don't, you know, the internet exists, but that same resource of data doesn't exist for, say, robotics yeah. or for biology. And so for a model to be a superhuman coder, you just need the affordances, which we've already been able to give the models. And you need to sort of like take the existing algorithms and, and like scale it up. For a model to be a superhuman biological researcher, you need automated like laboratories where it's able to propose and run experiments in a hugely paralyzable way. Or for it to become as competent in the real world as we are, you need it to be able to act in the environment through robotics. And so you need a hell of a lot of robots for yeah. to actually like collect the data and, and do that in, in a way that unlimits. So one um, mismatch that I think we might see, and I'm, I'm actually also worried about us seeing, is you'll see uh, a huge impact on white collar work. Um, and whether that looks like just dramatic augmentation, uh, you know, like TBD, but uh, you will see that world change a lot, uh, and we'll need to pull forward the uh, like the dramatic transformation of things that make our lives a hell of a lot better. So to pull forward medicine, to pull forward abundance in the real world, we need to like actually figure out the you know the cloud laboratories and the robotics and this kind of stuff. So that's the timeline. But what's even more shocking is that in another interview, alongside his coworker Trenton Bricken, who works on mechanistic interpretability at Anthropic, he basically says, we don't even need new AI models for this future to happen. Even with today's systems, if companies had the right infrastructure, tooling, and access to enough data, they could already automate nearly every white collar job. Check this out. Just to make it explicit, because we've been touching on it here, even if AI progress totally stalls, you think that the models yes. are really spiky and they don't have general intelligence, yes. it's so economically valuable and sufficiently easy to collect data yes. on all of these different jobs, these white collar job tasks, yes. such that to Shalto's point, we will, we should expect to see them automated within the next five years. Yeah. Like even we, if we you need to hand world. spoon every single task yes. to the model. It's like economically worthwhile to do so. Even if like algorithmic like progress stalls out and like we just never figure out how to like keep progress going, which I don't think is the case. Like it, that hasn't stalled out yet. It seems to be going great. Um, the current suite of algorithms are sufficient to automate white collar work provided you have enough of the right kinds of data. Yes. And in a way that like compared to the TAM of salaries for all of those kinds of work is so like trivially worthwhile. Yeah, mm. yeah exactly. So yeah, I understand that at the end of the day, these are just statements, but they're statements coming from people who are actively building this technology. And the point he makes at the end there is probably the most important part. It's not just that it will be possible to automate all white collar work, it's that it will be economically worthwhile to do so. 
That's the key point. I mean, the fact is, we live in a capitalist society, and competition, especially in tech, is ruthless. Just recently, we saw Microsoft lay off literally 3% of its entire workforce, with the majority of jobs affected having to do with software engineering. The engineers that helped create the AI systems at Microsoft are now essentially being replaced by those same AI systems they helped create. The corporations don't care, it's all about profits and results. And while we're seeing it first with software development, it's only a matter of time before it spreads to everyone else. Analysts, accountants, HR, consultants, marketers, managers, even executives. These tools don't get tired, they don't take breaks, and they scale instantly. Once the economic incentives are strong enough, every company will follow. Because if they don't, they won't survive. Now, again, most people still think this is decades away. But if you listen to the people who are actually building this technology, they're saying it's coming much faster, and we are nowhere near ready. In this next clip, Peter Diamandis and DataStage founder David Blunden talk about exactly that. They explain why this coming shift will be more disruptive than anything we've seen, and how there's simply no time to prepare for it. Whether it hits in two years, five years, or even 10 years, either way, that's barely any time when you're talking about remapping millions of people's careers. 2029 to 2031, the end of white collar work. Uh, I believe that, you know, and this is an argument I have with a lot of people, uh, what will it not be able to do? Uh, I don't see any job that, you know, that at this point we're talking about advanced super intelligence. Uh, do you, do you think this is true that we're going to start um, to see the end of all white collar work by that point? The, the thing that's driving me nuts about this is that that that's the end point you know figure 2030 is the end point but it's pretty much a straight line between here and there mm -hmm. and so the amount of job dislocation you know in 2026 2027 is going to be like nothing we've ever seen and i keep telling all the ceos you're way under planning you need to look at every single person in your organization all the individual contributors doing white collar work and you need to get them to become AI users right now. Yeah. Otherwise, you're condemning them to being sitting ducks. And you're like, well, it's two or three years in the future. Two or th they, they've been working and doing their career planning for 20 years. Yeah, they're stuck. Like, yeah, you've got to get them on the platform now and free up the time for them to learn and put you know formal education programs uh, in front of them now because if you draw a straight line between now and 2030, which is probably more like 2029, 2028, that's only a couple years for people to remap their entire career yeah. path. There's, so you're doing there's a, a huge disservice by sticking your head in the sand and ignoring this. So yeah, I'm not trying to fear monger or anything, but I'm honestly worried about what's coming. Like he said, if by 2027 or even 2030, we can automate all white collar work, then between now and then isn't going to be business as usual. We're going to feel the effects. And in places like Silicon Valley, we already are. So what happens to all the people who've spent their whole lives training to be an accountant or a data analyst or a software engineer or any other white collar profession you can think of? And what about the people who haven't even started their careers yet? What do they study? What do they aim for? Is any career path even safe anymore? I mean, the best possible advice right now seems to be to use these AI tools. Get familiar with them, understand what you can do with them, and try to stay on top of the latest developments. While it might not save your job, at least you won't be blindsided by the inevitable. Also, I've been reading through a lot of the comments on my last video, the AI future no one wants to talk about. Which absolutely blew up by the way, thank you guys so much for that. But one point that kept coming up was, if these companies replace everyone with AI, who's going to buy their products? Like, how can you have consumers if they don't have money to consume with? And yeah, this is a valid concern. But here's the thing, just because something doesn't fit perfectly into our current system, doesn't mean it won't happen anyway. 
These tech companies are not worried about whether their customers will have jobs five years from now and what the implications of that might be. They're focused on maximizing profit and minimizing cost. That's the game. If one company lays off half its workforce and somehow becomes more productive, the others are going to be forced to do the same just to stay competitive. So yeah, I don't know exactly what the future holds, and I'm usually pretty optimistic about AI in general. I think it can be transformative in amazing ways, but it's hard to ignore the fact that these next few years are going to be super shaky for everyone. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this though. I know a lot of you are feeling the same uncertainty, and sometimes it feels like the world around us just isn't paying attention. I'm not claiming to have all the answers myself, but I've got my eye on this space every single day. And honestly, I agree with a lot of what was said in these clips. If this is the AI future no one's ready for, the least we can do is try not to walk into it blind. Anyway, if this video resonated with you, or if you've been thinking about this stuff too, drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd really love to hear your perspective. And of course, if you want to stay ahead of the AI wave and get the latest on the stuff most people still aren't even talking about, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.